Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of A Handful of Hope. I am so happy and grateful to have Sherry Dumont with us today, the queen of confidence who has mentored business and sales leaders for over 20 years. She's a speaker, writer, and creator of the groundbreaking program, Power Place, Ignite Your Quantum Leap and Take Your Career to the Next Level, and the Confident Success Circle community. Sherry built a successful corporate career in the pharmaceutical and clinical research industries, managing and training hundreds of people during her long tenure. She became a sought after strategic growth navigator, starting multi-million dollar divisions for corporations looking to diversify their portfolios. Conquering the male dominated boardroom, Sheree's passion for giving women voices in their careers and lives continued to grow. And that passion is now a thriving business where she helps women leaders uncrush their confidence. Gosh, I love that. And take their career and lives to the next level. Sheree, welcome and thank you so very much for being here. Thank you, Jesse, for having me here. It's great to be here. Oh, this is, I'm so excited for this. And I have to tell you selfishly, one of the reasons I'm really excited, I would, I would say without fail, every time I run a training and I get asked a question of what do you think needs to ha what, what if, what would be the biggest change that would make the biggest difference in the world? And I always answer the same as if more women emerge as leaders. And I think that if more women emerge as leaders, I think women are so much more emotionally aware and emotionally present that their their approach to leadership i think would start to make safe for men to start to get in touch with that and for for so many of the the i don't know if it's like the shackles that men are bound to and what it means to be a man for those to start to finally fall away and when we were talking beforehand you were talking to me about women stepping into and tapping into their feminine powers. And I was hoping maybe you could touch on that a little bit and just elaborate because I'd love to start there. Yeah. Um, you know, we as women spend a lot of time um, hiding behind who, who we are. We think we have to be like men. When I was starting out my career, I, I remember my first suit was a, a black skirt suit I bought at Nordstrom with the white blouse with the bow tie and big shoulder pads and, and wanting to be like a man. And that's not the case. You're, when you said women leaders, right now is the time for women leaders to step up and, and in every aspect of life. We're, we're lucky enough to have a woman who's going to be VP nominated in the next week or so, women in Congress, women running for office after office. It's just amazing to me. But on emotional intelligence, so there's a lot of aspects to emotional intelligence and <laughs> it's, it's something that men do eventually come into, but for the majority of women, they own it from the beginning because mm. we're taught as little girls to nurture and be comforting to our, our dolls. Um, and it starts there. And for those of us who had dolls, I had trucks, I'll say. <laughs> I was a tomboy. <laughs> I had a few dolls, but mostly trucks. Um, but you, you've become nurturing. And those aspects you can bring into the work place. No, you don't have to be that comforting as you would to your, your little doll, but you do have to have, be empathetic, know what the other person is going through. You need to be able to talk to um, how that person would feel going through a situation. You have to really step up and and be a leader in that um sympathy is another thing empathetic and sympathy you know are, are key we don't see a lot of that in our world today you mentioned that entering into the corporate world and feeling like you have to be like a man and the the pinstripe suit the pinstripe suits that you got and it I find this fascinating because as a man, I wouldn't think that. But then as you were saying that, I started to, you know, you can split your conscious and you start to act as that observer. And I had one of those holy shit moments because I can remember even thinking of 
significant female figures in my life and seeing them dressed and going off to business or to do business and how there was that very much so like there was almost like you had to and it was it was very much too i'm going into the man's world right i i'm, I'm trying to get into the the men's room or, or something like that and, and to break into that 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 the c-suite essentially right where all the boys hang out how can we start to use or how can women start to use then femininity, femininity to their advantage to be able to do that? How can they start to own more of their femininity to go into that as opposed to having to adopt those strategies of the past of being more masculine? Well, we're lucky to be in the times we are. Well, we're all working from home now, so we're yeah. really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't we talking about that, that, that hoodies are going to be the new business suit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trevor Noah hoodies. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took off mine so I could do this. <laughs> Still have the yoga pants on, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when you do step into that business role, we're, we're lucky because it, it isn't... Um, I remember when I was a district manager um, coming up in my career, I my reps, if they were in suits that match like the females, the, the women, like the same black pants and black jacket, I sent them home to go change. Mm. That's not the case anymore. So part of it is we, we are lucky that we do live in different times. Um, you know, when, when I'm getting ready to go make a presentation to a group of men or women, I'm, I'm more bringing out my personality. You know, I will wear a very bold leopard dress and have not no problem about that. And if they have a problem about it, well, screw them. Yeah, <laughs> they're lost. Sorry, time. they're I, lost. <laughs> they're lost. Um, yeah. But you know, there there's other things we can bring into the boardroom as well. You know, some of the the techniques we use. Um, is how we network. You know, women are, are natural networkers, even though most will say I'm an introvert and I don't like to network, but we like having conversations with other people. And what is networking? It's having conversations with other people. And part of something that you have to do in business to help your career along is build your alliances and build your alliances within your company and outside of your company. And um, that that's one aspect of uh, that we bring that yes men are are may have the loudest voice in the room and i i love men and love working with men but i know that sometimes the loudest voice is not the most com um, competent do you find that just looking at that change in dress of going from the the black slacks to now the leopard print. Do you find then that there's a shift also in that, you know, they say first impression, we can never get a second chance for a first impression. And just in hearing, and please correct me if I'm way off on this, it sounds like that once upon a time, or at least how it used to be, was very much that first impression was that was trying to be made was more of like, here I am, I fit in with you, versus now it seems like it's entering into that space of here I am this is what I have to offer. Is, is that fair to say, or is it, is it something along those lines? Yeah, it, it is. You know, this is, this is exactly who I am, what I have to offer. And if it's not a fit for you, that's okay. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that we, you have to have confidence to be really okay with. If we're not a fit, then that's okay. It's not about me. It's not about you. Yeah. Let's just move on. Um, yeah, I, I think so. It's a, it's a change in mindset. And, you know, I know that when I started out in my career many years ago, I had to fit in like a man. I couldn't be promoted unless I was acting like a man, going through the assessments that they put me through. The only way to pass it was to have the same characteristics as a man. And it wasn't until I hired a coach to help me see that, because I wasn't going to see that on my own, that I was like, 
oh, okay, I need to adopt this to make this next move. That's not the case anymore. We can bring everything we, we bring as women to the boardroom and it is accepted or the conference room. Not all of us will be in the boardroom. Gosh, I just, you know, I, I'm so mind blown right now by, by considering the blind ignorance of male culture and how many probably tens of millions, billions of dollars for companies that are so obsessed with bottom lines and productivity and moving those decimal points a little bit more, how many billions of dollars have likely been lost over the years because of an ineptness to be able to see that you are stifling, you're stifling getting the most from your team if you're taking the female portion of the team and putting them into this box and saying, hey, you need to, you need to fit this box if you want to play in this space. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, hey, let's, why don't we go play golf this afternoon after we finish up and, you know, but I'm going to play with both hands and you have to play with your right hand tied behind your back and, and then spot me five points too. <laughs> looking at confidence, so looking at this, this merit, really recognizing now there's more of a recognition of merit and confidence is essential to be able to come in and, and own that aspect of if they're not really embracing you for you, it's okay to walk away. Easy to say, heck of a lot harder to do, right? It kind of rolls off the tongue when we're saying it, but even when you kind of finish it, it's like, how does someone begin to develop that confidence? Or if they've begun to develop it, how do they really just fully embrace it? Is there something they need to think about? Is there something they need to do? Is it a, is it a ritual? Is it a repetition? We were joking before about the power pose. You know, is there, is there a, is there a, a, a the three-step process that somebody can do to really step into that confidence and get to a place where they are so confident in whom they are when they're doing in those situations that they can be okay with that? Well, I, I love the superpower pose and, and also having a theme song. You got to have a theme song. <laughs> awesome. awesome. I usually hearing Beyonce in my head or, or whatever I listen to that morning. I, mine, mine is always changing um, depending on my mood. But I, I do have five power, power moves that um, get you noticed. And, you know, it always starts with self-assessment. Um, knowing, you know, get to know yourself. Um, you'd be surprised how many people don't know all their strengths and all their skills. And they don't really embrace what makes them great. And, and it could be that you have to reach out to your friends and family and your supporters and say, what, what do you think are my strengths? Because you can't recognize them. Um, I, you know, that, that's really where you have to start. Um, and where have you had successes in the past? You know, you make a list of your successes. I mean, I kind of think of it as, you know, when you're, you're gearing up for a job interview and putting your um, PowerPoint presentation together about who you are, you're going to put your strengths, you're going to put your skills, you're going to put your, what people are saying about you. So that, that's really the first place I think you have to start. And I always, um, I talked about networking, you know, having those allies inside the comp your company and out, they're going to help you, they're going to be a sounding board. There's, there's also, I, I just wrote a big piece on this um, for our Confidence Success Circle emails, but it's have a personal board of directors, someone mm -hmm. to help advise you on your career. These are people that not only help mentor you, but are a really good sounding board about your career and can help move you up. And um, we can't forget about the boss. <laughs> everyone, has, everyone usually reports to someone unless you're an entrepreneur. And then um, that you have to align with what their, their um, goals and strategies are and, and make sure they know that you are what you're doing. Because if you don't pipe up and say, this is what I'm doing, you'll never move forward. Um, 
and then branding yourself, knowing, knowing about body language. Um, in fact, I, I mentioned those emails and the email that went out today was all about your non-verbal um, non communication because we're all on Zoom. So you can't necessarily uh, show up in the office, but you, your body language and how during a meeting, how are you engaging? Where, where are you? Are you, you know, doing social media while you're on there? That shows and, and showing up. So those are some power moves to, in your career to get confidence. It's also jumping in. We, we talked about this before the show. You know, it's sometimes jumping in and doing it and not thinking about it. Because if you think about it, your self-doubt will creep in. That personal board of directors you mentioned, I love that concept. And is it something with, with that personal board of directors, is it a, an advisory board that we're creating from friends, from family, from professional network? And is it something where we should be giving them guidelines of what they, where their advisement should start and stop? Is it something where we're, we're empowering them to say, Hey, the, you know, when you dress like this, it's this, or when you say this, it's this, or, if you're habitually late or, you know, going down that list, where, what are some guidelines we can give those folks? So for the board of directors, it, it's more um, your network of professional people in your lives. Friends and family are great to support you. They're, they're always hopefully going to support you, <laughs> but the board of directors really should be on the professional level of people that can give you advice and help shape your career. Um, so you do give them guidelines, what you're looking for from them. It's a set period of time. So they're, they're not committing to more than a year. You know, you don't want to overtax people. And, um, I actually wrote out, it, it was 10, I think it was 10 steps of how to set up your board of directors. And I'd be happy to share it with your audience, the, the whole thing. But those are some of the top tips of who you're looking for and be very specific about what the goals are that you're hoping to get from them um, for, for your board. It's like any board of directors. Mm. Yeah, that would be incredible if you'd be willing to do that because yeah, I think I that that would be extremely helpful helpful and it probably answers all my other questions I have about them too. <laughs> about it too. And you're making me remember everything that yeah. I wrote down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that oh yeah, wait, what, when I wrote that down, what was I? Oh yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. I catch that sometimes too when, I, when I'm being interviewed. Somebody asks you, yeah, so you, you, you talked about this this one time and I was like, oh my gosh, I talked about a lot of stuff one time. What, what exactly did I say? And I'm just like, well, I'm going to trust you and say, if you're saying I said it, I must have said it. Okay, I love this. I love these these five power moves that you can make. I love the board of directors. I love that you're going to offer those those ten steps that people can take, and I think that'll be something a really great asset to the audience. We'll be for sure to put in the show notes and and all the links and everything like that. When you work with women, and you're really working with them to help them take that next step up and to help them really, I, I love this uncrush their confidence. Do you find that there is consistently a theme of an area that women seem to struggle the most with in, in terms of stepping into that more confident version of themselves? And do you find also then, does there seem to be <clears throat> a similar theme of origin of that lack of confidence? And I, I ask because one, I would love for people to just become aware and hopefully put put language to some of the things that people may be feeling. And two, this invites people, I think the opportunity to start the self-exploration process with themselves and to really be able to look at where confidence may be lacking in the opportunity for adding more into it. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we look at a lot of leaders and think they're confident. They have everything. They never have any self doubt. They never, have imposter syndrome sneaking in, and that's not true. I, you know, we all have, I think the most common themes I see is um, 
imposter syndrome and and I think that gets overused, but it's it's really that self doubt, that mm -hmm. doubting that I can do this, doubting that I can step into this next role, doubting that I can move past where I'm at now. And some of it, every situation is different. And I work with women one on one. So you know, when I step in, step into coaching with them, it is one-on-one -on -one and very unique to them. But recently I had someone who, who knew it was time to hold, to, to move on from her job. And she, because she was being held back and none of her ideas were being accepted and she'd been there for 10 years, but it was really a great job and she didn't have to worry about security or anything. And she just was holding her back herself back and it was really a lack of confidence in what she had done over her career i mean she could see her successes but really truly believing it in her in her mind and it started with looking you know putting down those strengths and putting down that that self-assessment of this is what i've done over my career and we started there and worked on it and yeah. A lot of imposter syndrome stepped into, you know, even uh, I, I read once that Meryl Streep and Natalie Portman suffer from imposter syndrome. I mean, these are two great actresses and they still do not think they're worthy. Do you find women struggle with celebrating and maybe even acknowledging the things that they've done, like just how significant their accolades are more so than men? I do. Yeah, I, I see women struggle with giving themselves, patting themselves on the back as it is, that they don't see all the great things they do, not only at work, but in their lives and how they take on so much and sometimes more than one role. And I, I do, we go back to different times, but men are stepping up more and, and participating in everything in life. It used to be here before I was an adult, you know, men were <laughs> king of the king of the house and things were his way or, or the highway. Um, as my dad used to say, he was always joking, but <laughs> yeah, I think we've all probably heard that one at least once in some iteration of it. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, it, it is women take on a lot more and a lot more rules in life as well. You know, we're, we're we're there so i totally sure if i may ask you a personal question i'm really curious who or what inspires you that's a good question i have you know i think i get inspired every single day i really every day i'm looking for what sparks my interest um Sometimes I get fired up, as you know, in our previous discussions, I get fired up about a lot of things going on in our world these days. Um, but um, I try to look for inspiration and, and how can we help more people and build, build them up? You know, I don't think there's enough of that in this world. What's the, what is, I'm curious, what is your, what does the world look like to you when women are emerging as leaders and they are really stepping into and owning their confidence the way they can or they could? You know, one of the most confident things um, I saw recently, um, and, I, and I'm going to bring up the politics thing, but it's not political. It's AOC on her speech in the um, Senate um, when she took down that congressman for berating her on the steps of, of Congress and said it's not okay. Hmm. That's that's an ideal world. That's a confident woman. I, I had to write about that immediately because I couldn't, I couldn't understand why we would let this go on in this day and age. And we do, but that, that was the most confident thing I had seen in a long time. And, um, yeah, these are changing times. 
although that was two weeks ago and last weekend all i was hearing is the women that are going to be the vp pick are too ambitious yeah i'm right they're ambitious <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> yes the, the, the hypocrisy of some of the statements people people make i think is really completely lost on them <laughs> <laughs> Every man who has been VP has been ambitious. Yeah. Do you want, do you want somebody really like second in command not being ambitious? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, here, take it all. Don't worry. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. 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 No, thank you. I think you, you want that, right? Like ambition is ultimately what drives everything. It's what makes this technology possible. It's what makes our lives better. It's I, you know, it's funny, like people, I feel like they sometimes treat ambition like it's this dirty word, yet ambition is at the core of the betterment of our relationships, the betterment of our health, the betterment of our wealth, the betterment of virtually every facet of our life. If we play in that space, we realize that there had to be an ambition first to acquire that which we were pursuing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and now you're going to say somebody's too ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's beyond words. It really is. It really is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sometimes think that there's just, there's somebody somewhere out there writing a daily comedy skit. And it's like watching Seinfeld in the 90s or something like that. What's the most ridiculous scenario we could play out right now that really run with it, make people laugh? And oh, no, 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 <laughs> this one's even more ridiculous. Let's just run with it. We'll call the potential vice president candidate too ambitious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Too, too ambitious. And, and yeah, you know, the, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have double standards for anything and anyone, you know, everyone would be, you know, they always say in co in business confidence gets you ahead versus confident. Mm. Well, I think those should be even, I think that you have to have, the skills, but you also have to be confident. And, you know, I struggled with confidence my entire life um, from my seventh grade counselor telling me I would never amount to anything to which a counselor should never tell you at seventh grade. And, and I didn't have any reason to doubt her because I, I wasn't feeling confident and having to build it up my entire life. And you learning those lessons really give you gives you guts to move on to the next level what was the shifting point for you of where you no longer believe that story you know it was in my late 20s um and it was it it wasn't the last time I had a confidence um, shift or confidence doubt, I will say, but it was the real shifting point was when I was 28. And um, a lot of things that that year changed. I decided to leave a marriage that wasn't working. I um, lost about 70 pounds wow. um, and I stepped into a new role in um, sales. Um, I was in marketing. I was behind the scenes. I was never up front. Um, and all of that together, I had to step into some confidence because I couldn't even get the job. I couldn't leave the marriage. I couldn't move on from the weight without stepping into some, some form of confidence. And it was a number of things within life that shifted that. And I'm thankful for it, but I've had my confidence taken down since, you know, when you get um, laid off or fired from your first job um, years later, <laughs> that's a gut punch. And how do you pick yourself back up? You know, I, I gave myself a weekend um, to, to mourn and, and live in that. And then I was back out there Monday morning. Okay. I got to find a job. Let's, let's do this. You know, if you wouldn't mind diving into that a little bit more for people who are listening, I think that gut punch is extremely relevant to right now. There are a lot of people who have not only been gut punched, but they've been kicked while they're down too. How do people pick themselves back up? And a lot of these folks too, who have been knocked down, they have been 
superstars in so many different ways, uh, entrepreneurs, high quality team members on a corporate team. What can they start to do, those who have been taking that gut punch, who have been kicked weather down, what can people start doing to pick themselves back up and get out there? So you, you have to know, you have to give yourself that time to mourn. I don't, didn't give myself very much time to mourn, but I, I think it's really important to acknowledge what happened and why it happened and what, if you could do anything to change the situation. I mean, in, in my case, there was a few things I could have. I, I didn't have that emotional intelligence that I have now, mm. uh, or I did have it. I wasn't using it. <laughs> Let's say that. And I get my mouth got me in trouble, but you know, um, the, that, that's really a starting point, but you do have to have a plan and you do have to know, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Um, a lot of self doubt creeps in there and you've got to acknowledge that there is that self doubt that's going to creep in and have a plan, not only what you're going to do to find a new job and um, how you're going to do it and don't set timetables because nobody knows in this, these days and this day and age at this point, but um, know your inner critic, know what that self-doubt sounds like. I, I write it down. I feel like yeah. we were talking about pen and paper. I, I love pen and paper and um, so I do write it down and then I silence that inner critic. I rewire my brain to think, turn those negative thoughts to positive. And don't compare yourself to others because you being on a journey that may find you a job is not the same journey I'm on. Hmm. And I, I've actually been reading a lot about comparing yourself to other people. And it's, it's quite fascinating. And the more I think about it, the, the more there's an article in my head coming out and it's not written yet. So <laughs> I, I'm not there, but I'm going, I'm going to get there. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I always say you have to have a cheerleader on board. You have to have a cheerleader you know, in your family and friends supporting you, but you have to personally have that cheerleader. And, and that comes with finding your inner confidence. Hmm. Sure. Before we ask my final question, where can people find you online? They can find me at confident warriors with an S dot com. Confident. Really warriors. Yeah, yeah. And we'll have the links and everything up here. When, when you're carrying on through your day and you're having the conversations you have, you're working with the women you're working, what is it that, what is it that drives you? What is it that propels you through the day that you know, gets you up, especially during strange and stressed times like this? What is it that gets you up every day to go and emerge and, and share and teach and serve in the way you do? Well, I'll say the first thing that gets me up in the morning is my, my boxer puppy. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good at that, aren't they? She's four, but she wants to go out. So <laughs> that's the first thing. No, you know, that I, I just want to help women have the confidence that I have seen can grow within each one of us when, especially if I meet people that are successful already and that they're holding themselves back by not opening up what they can do. Or um, I just met someone in a Facebook group and she's an entrepreneur, but she said, why would anybody pay for my stuff? Why would anyone want what I do? Because mm. I, I don't know that I'm that good and she's holding herself back and I have yet to talk to her. Um, we're talking Friday, but I, you know, I just want, I want to reach out and say, 
you can do this. You, you just need someone on your side to help you move past this to, because what she's creating is amazing. And I want it to be out there for the world. And I think that makes the world a better place. I totally lied about that being my last question. I just thought of one more. <laughs> I, I want to selfishly ask it if, it's okay, if that's okay. Yeah, it is. What can men do to better support and elevate women, especially as they pursue confidence? You know, they can have their backs. You know, it, it's not yet in the journey, whatever confidence journey you're on. You know, I, I laid out the, I went through this shift in my life. I didn't have as many people around me to say, other than friends and family, to say, you know, you, you got this. But just saying that, you know, you got this. You, mm -hmm. you can do this. You can move this. You, you can jump off that cliff and take that leap. And I believe in you and I believe it's going to happen. You know, when I was launching this business, it's, it was my husband that, you know, he, he has my back. He, he's going to be there for me no matter what. And um, God willing um, in these times of, of COVID. Um, but it, it means the world. And, and, you know, ask, ask that person what they need because every person's going to be different. I love that. Everyone, my goodness, wasn't this a crash course in confidence and really about how to show up for ladies, how to show up in leadership and emerge and be your, I love this, the uncrush the confidence, be that better version of yourself. It's that it's those improvements daily that help you emerge. And I, I think Sherry took us on such an incredible journey. The idea of shifting from that, you know, going into work and being trying to be like the guys to really now coming into a place where you can go in and going from fitting into the merit, who you are, being able to present your true and authentic self, not being afraid to shy back. And if people don't accept and embrace that, be bold and brave enough to walk away, to have the confidence to recognize it has nothing to do with you and has everything to do with their own ineptitude to catch up and realize the brilliance that you have to offer. Speaking of brilliance, my goodness, it still boggles my mind to think of the billions of dollars that have been lost in revenue, probably even trillions at this point. If we look at corporate world across the men stupidly trying to put women into a little box to limit them and, and make them fit into the boys, the boys club. And I think that there's such an incredible arsenal of tools here that Sherry laid out for us that we can all use, whether it's the five power poses or it's really diving into developing your board of directors group, which she so graciously said she would share those 10 steps that we can all do, which I highly encourage each of you to do. I'm definitely going to look it over because there is some real incredible value that comes from having that outside input, having that input from other people who are vested in your success and who are willing to tell and, and help guide you on that path. You know, it's, it's, the world is an impossibly heavy thing to try to hold on our own. But when we can distribute that weight amongst friends, amongst colleagues, amongst people that we, we look to as mentors, it's amazing on how much more, you know, it's the old saying, many hands make light work. And there's perhaps no greater work we made to make light than our own personal development. There's no need to bear the burden of it all on our own. Looking at the idea of how to pick ourselves up when we've been knocked down, many of us have been punched in the gut and kicked. And I love that she said, give yourself time to mourn, give yourself time to grieve. You know, so often we are so quick to get punched and kicked and we think that we immediately have to pick ourselves up bloody and not take time to tend to our wounds. The problem with this is as much of a cool image it is and how it seems so badass, the fundamental problem is, is we are going into something then at less than who we are. We are going into it in a way of not at our absolute best and what we want to show up as is that best version of ourselves, but how can we truly be that if we haven't given ourselves that time to grieve? Because if you've been kicked, if you've been punched, if you've been knocked right down, you have suffered some sort of loss and you absolutely deserve to and owe it to yourself to give yourself that time to grieve and then make a plan. I love that she said, make a plan. You know, so often we do not take the things that really are the most important, getting ourselves time to grieve and heal and make a plan about them. We again think we just sweep it under the rug and hurry through the process to try to get back out there and get back on the horse or whatever it is. 
make a plan. And getting on that horse can be part of the plan, but give yourself the grace of grieving along the way. And guys, I hope you didn't turn this off when you, this became a conversation about women. And if you did, and you're somehow not listening just magically to the end, re-listen to this because there is a wonderful list of tools in here that you can also look to and apply to your own confidence, but more importantly, how you can recognize this to support and elevate women, whether it's in your personal life or it's in your professional life. And I love, love the simple notion of just saying, you got this. You got this. My goodness, what an incredible world it would be if we all just reassured one another that little bit more of our brilliance. Sherry, this has been such an incredible gift to share with us. Thank you so very much for sharing with us, the watchers, the listeners, and I think more people are walking away today knowing that they got this because of what you shared. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. We will see you next time, everyone, on another edition of A Handful of Hope. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.